Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Aaron Grossman. This is Marilyn Steffen. Uh, we are recording uh, our episode on Unit 3, How Do Living Things Adapt to Change? And of course, before we launch into our hot tips and reflection and talking about preparation for our next unit, just a reminder, uh, please uh, consider uh, hitting subscribe um, or follow us on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, at ClassroomD4. Marilyn is at Marilyn underscore Stefan. And all of this stuff is at our landing page, JustTwoTeachers.com. Uh, so let's begin with a hot tip. So what do you got for us, Marilyn? Okay, with all the writing that we've been doing, my hot tip today is the Spell It Right. I've used this for years, and um, I don't know if you can see it. There we go. So rather than kids asking you how to spell something, and I know they always have like a personal dictionary to look things up, but sometimes I think they like to try. So they try, and then um, they come to me. Sometimes it's spelled correctly, and sometimes it isn't. So I help them out, and... Um, that just alleviates a lot of how do you spell, how do you spell. And actually, teacher's help here should also be peer help because other kids do start to grab the sheet and fill in the spelling for kids. So, um, But they are really proud when they come to me and I don't need to write a word. So uh, that is my hot tip. That's great, and I think super smart. And uh, the, the, the impetus for me sharing my hot tip was a question that both of us keep receiving, which is, what are we grading? So mm -hmm. we can spend two or three days working with the text and it's not entirely clear what grade we're gonna enter and where that's gonna ultimately land on our grade book. So um, I have been creating these documents uh, for the, the sentence expansion activity because button so. So if you go to Just Two Teachers, we've got a couple in the unit two and then I've created three more for our unit three implementation. Um, and this is obviously not a training on how to use that strategy, but in short, it forces kids to go back to the text and use these conjunctions because, but, and so. So for week one here, I have web feet are an important adaptation because, and then they have to retrieve evidence to support that. Web feet are an important adaptation, but, so they have to understand that change of direction. And then finally, web feet are an important adaptation, so, and we get that cause and effect piece. And you can use this obviously as a formative exercise, you can also use this to access your language standards or um, in this case, we're working with informational text. Um, and then finally, it just gets kids in that habit of writing, I think, appropriately complex sentences. And when you think you've arrived at a certain place of independence with your students, uh, you can take these sheets and then grade them and then put them where you think they belong. And, um, one of those reading standards or the language standard. Um, and those all borrow from the work of a woman named Judith Hockman and the Writing Revolution. And I've linked to, um, in the description below, an outline of the Because Button So strategy done by Doug Lamoth, a Teach Like a Champion guy. And then also we'll link to a video of students engaged in the instructional move Because Button So. All right, great. So we're gonna reflect on how things are going for us currently in unit two, followed by uh, where we see opportunities to elevate things that we like and then ultimately we'll predict how things uh, will transpire in our classrooms. So let's start with that reflection piece. Uh, how are things going with unit two for you so far? Okay, like you, uh, my students love the stories. What I did was supplemented with library books and get epic so that I'd have more fables, examples of fables since um, the variety in the program was folk tales, myths, I like that we could differentiate between those, but I did like having more examples mm -hmm. for the kids. And I think it made them more successful at writing because they could use a different text besides just the mentor text. So what we did after many days of rough drafting is um, we used Book Creator to create our fables, our final product. Um, and the students were able to choose their photos in Book Creator and it is free. Um, this one is about an elephant that wants to be as fast as a cheetah. And look at this great picture she found right there, too. I love that. Fantastic. So um, then we have the scorpion and the hunter, and they did follow the pattern that we went over, that the setting and the characters begin in the first paragraph. So this is the, here's the scorpion. Great, great stories. And one of my favorites with the illustrations are the dinosaurs. And he took the story, the lion and the mouse, and sort of modeled it after that. Um, here's the web. And then um, the dinosaur chews through the net and frees the other dinosaur. But really cute. And they enjoyed it. I've actually gone on Book Creator since when I was printing these out to show. And I saw that some kids have gone on and made others on their break. So that's kind of cool. And I'm going to make you pause right there. So mm -hmm. Epic Books, is that free? 
Get Epic is free for teachers and then you attach your students. They can't use it at home unless their parents pay $5 a month, I think, to okay. access the story. So the stories can only be accessed through your account at home. And I mean, about, at school, I'm sorry. And then Book Creator? Book Creator is, as I said, a free app and okay. it has very short, um, it's not for long stories, like I'll explain another one at the end for our informative piece, but very, uh, a few pages and you get 40 books for free actually. Um, I think they start charging after that. Mm -hmm. So they All right. So, and then I know that you've been making some modifications to your must do may do. So right. you can share that with us. So I still keep the essential question at the top. And then what I've started doing each day is putting the standard underneath the I can statement. Um, I, you know, it's up on my board, but I feel like if it's on this paper for the kids with the date, here's their must do may do's. And I'm still using all the icons here. For clever, if the story's on, we were reading Pandora, and then if they need their journal to um, put the questions in an answer, and this has been working really well. I'm able to get through a lot of material in a day, and people have said, you know, wow, that looks like a lot to type for every day, and the kids, each child gets their own copy every day, but it sort of guides me as my lesson plan as well, mm -hmm. and it makes me really, I, I have to be really concise. What am I trying to teach today, and what do I want the kids to know? So. Um, that is still working for me. So I'm really happy that we have a flow. Um, and it does sound like that sort of this, what we had both anticipated, higher levels of engagement with this content versus the pieces in government. Definitely. Largely because it's in story form. Yes. Um, so how about you? Let's hear your reflection. Well, you know, to build on your idea of sort of the stuff that you've been borrowing from must do, I have been um, better at putting the technology piece in front of my students and being able to push out that content through the uh, benchmark um, through that benchmark uh, landing piece. Uh, and there's a little subtle piece within that, and those people who are using it probably know what I'm talking about, which is an opportunity for the kids to rate the book. Mm -hmm. And this is just important data for me going forward into further years of implementation. So I know what the kids like and what uh, doesn't really seem to pique their interest. Um, I am one week behind you in that fable mm -hmm. writing. So I'm still in that draft mode. and. Part of it is uh, just sort of um, trying to stick with kind of that outline to experiment with that. But also um, I paused and I, had sh I put this on our uh, website, justtwoteachers.com. And that is I asked the kids to respond to a specific prompt um, using evidence from that King Midas selection. So in this case, the kids responded to all that glitters is not gold is a po proverb. That is sometimes things that we think are going to be valuable and true turn out to be not be so. Mm -hmm. The King, of Mida King Midas ends with Midas learning that all that glitters is not gold. Explain how he learns this lesson. Use specific examples from the text. Be sure to cite your evidence. Um, and I think this has actually been, I'm glad that I've done this largely because when we talk about unit three, this is gonna be a really important disposition and habit the kids are engaged in. And so this is kind of what I got. And again, I always mm. sort of quick to explain, I'm not trying to game it, but these kids are now in that place where they're giving me introductions. Um, we now have a nice body with lots of textual evidence and then a sense of closure. And so imagine you get one wish, that's what the student wrote. You wish to turn everything you touch um, will turn it into gold. Unfortunately, this means everything. Sometimes all that glitters is not gold. And so you can see that she is getting ready for that claim piece. And then we're gonna see a bunch of evidence of why that proverb, all that glitters is not gold, tends to be, or is, is true as it uh, tends to be. All right, Marilyn, so let's talk about what we like about unit three, in which we're focusing on this idea of how do living things adapt to change. And I know that both of us have been texting back and forth. We both realize that there's a lot of muscle memory being sort of developed and crystallized in our classrooms. And so by and large, I mean, we're building on a really nice platform to move from. So what else? Well, I what I really enjoy, and I know the kids will, is that this unit is about animals. And so um, I feel like the kids will come with a lot of background knowledge, which will in turn um, help them to comprehend some more complex text mm -hmm. and add to what they already know about animals and high interest level as well. So another opportunity to compare and contrast, to practice, um, what they're already sort of familiar with and just get better and hone in on some of those skills. Um, also, the video where they write uh, from a source reminds me of an SBAC um, question where they have to watch a video and respond right. based on the source. So uh, we can talk about writing from a source there. Um, additionally, I really liked in the additional resources, one of the activities 
was uh, pick your adaptation. Here it is. So the kids will um, choose an adaptation for themselves, like uh, wings, whatever it is. But Sandra Markle writes these adorable um, children's books, and it's based on each animal part that is added to a human. So I think that that would add to or be used as mentor text, not in the program, but um, really cute, cute animal teeth pictures and things. And I think it would be fun to take a picture of the kids and then have them draw that adaptation. Uh, love that they're, that I'm going to have the opportunity to actually explicitly teach possessive so that kids are not putting an apostrophe all over their papers because they do like using them. So might as well teach them how to do that. So that will be helpful. So those are the things I like. How about you? Um, and I highlighted a number of very similar things, including this mm -hmm. idea of them using video. I like the language standards that are being addressed within this unit. So one of them that really pops out for me is kids are going to be using uh, pronouns, identifying them, um, identifying uh, you know, what uh, noun or proper noun they're referring back to. And this is all based on the work um, of a guy named Tim Shanahan. I think some of the people who are watching know this. And he has been able to identify how a lot of kids will be will describe them as being weak in certain skills. So for example, they'll get a question wrong, they'll think it's a main idea issue or maybe it was problem solution or cause and effect. But frequently it's just, there was a pronoun used, that pronoun was used several times and they just didn't know what to refer to. So comprehension broke down, not a skill level, but rather they just didn't understand some of these language features. And I agree with that because online, you've posted an activity that was in unit one mm -hmm. where um, the, the text referred back to it, which was referring back to the country. But it was interesting, I used your question and I know I text you after that. I was like, my kids did not know what it was referring to. Right. So they had no idea. And it was just one sentence up within the same text. And so you're right. If they're not knowing what it is referred to, then they don't have any idea. It's about the country. And what Marilyn's referring to, if you want to go to our website, just two teachers.com within unit one, um, we've tagged um, some text dependent questions. And yeah, one of them was, what does it refer back to? And mm -hmm. it really forced the kids back into the text um, into some of the more denser uh, information they had to encounter. So um, apart from this uh, language thing, um, I like that we're continuing to build kids annotation skills. So, you know, we've both been told trust the process. And incrementally and slowly, kids have been refining their skills with annotation, and I think this continues that process. I really like the writing that they're doing with this unit. So over the course of this three weeks, they read multiple texts on adaptations, and ultimately they're gonna be writing an entire animal report based on those adaptations. Um, so an important disposition for them to be nurturing uh, throughout uh, their educational experience. Um, I like the fact that uh, we're going to be putting rubrics in front of our students. So I always, my, my kids will tell you Mr. Grossman doesn't answer level three questions. And what that means is that the researcher Lawrence Kohlberg would describe this idea of kids who would come to you and say, is this good? And so my response is, well, you have a rubric, you know, you tell me if it's good. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then do something about it. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about, you know, uh, SBAC, but that's one of the things that our kids are going to expect on SBAC or PARC or whatever assessment your um, kids are using as a summative piece. Um, almost uh, without exception, they're going to get a rubric. And so getting kids in that habit of right now, finishing a piece of writing and then matching it to something I think is important. And it's exciting that we're doing it, you know, in these, uh, I don't know, week 9, 10, and 11 of our school year. Mm -hmm. um, there are close reading prompts. And I think those are probably just comprehension questions, but I think uh, my experience with the first couple of units was I wish there was more time just to ask those kind of really chewy questions and those are embedded in the materials, which is nice to see. So lots to like uh, in this uh, third unit. And then um, there are always opportunities and we call them opportunities to elevate. And we're very quick to sort of point out that these are not about violating the integrity of the program. Like we're not supplementing per se, Instead, we're sticking with what the outcomes are in uh, Benchmark and finding opportunities to make things more engaging and then bring to bear uh, what we know about good instruction. So uh, you have several that are really smart. So can you share some of those for us? Yes. Okay. So when we get to our final writing piece after we're drafting, we're going to use the Write Reader app for our final informative. Um, that is different than Book Creator with the fables. That was for shorter text, and this will be longer with more information. So, Write Reader app, and that is also free. 
Um, and then something for fun, but the kids will also have to understand and apply their comprehension of what the adaptations are, is a cute little app called Switch Zoo, where the, um, the students can put a zebra head on a squirrel body, come up with a new animal, and then they have to explain how that animal survives in its environment based on those adaptations, the squirrel tail or the stripes. What does it do for them? How are you going to elevate? Um, look, Marilyn, uh, I just think uh, I love listening to hear, listening to what you do uh, to elevate for the students, largely because I just don't know about this stuff. So certainly I didn't know about Switch Zoo. I didn't know about uh, creating the books. Um, I didn't know about this right reader. Uh, these are just great things that you've managed to find and then shared uh, via this vlog. So with respect to how I plan to elevate for this one, one of the things that's really important to me is kids rehearsing before they're writing. And certainly there's some of that in benchmark with uh, the use of graphic organizers, but I also plan to employ Flipgrid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's totally free. Uh, it's built into Microsoft Teams. So if that's a platform you're using right now, know that it's just one of those, you hit the plus button and then suddenly mm -hmm. there it is for you. And uh, again, this is not a training on Flipgrid, but largely speaking, what it means is kids record a short video and then kids have an opportunity to respond to those videos. So uh, if we're going to be writing with a claim about adaptations, let's rehearse that. Let's hear other models from our classmates and then ultimately we'll be writing with um, all of that content. Uh, one of my favorites is something called Doodles Academy. Mm -hmm. So another free resource, and this is about art. and. I don't know really what happened with the implementation of the standards, but for some reason, art, which was really supposed to be at the forefront of a lot of our efforts, uh, got forgotten or neglected altogether. So Doodles Academy is really good, not just about kids producing art, but also about criticism, aesthetics, and history of art. And using this free platform, there's a lesson. It is unit four for them called Totem Animals. And I think it builds on a lot of the things that we're going to be learning in this unit. So, right. um, and then we've done a lot of extra supplements that are all posted on just two teachers. One we referred back to earlier because button. So um, I've done more work on subjects and predicates. And then in week one, I really want my kids to, to practice one time using this idea of adaptations and then writing with a claim about adaptations with evidence that they read within that week one. So that's also posted up on Just Two Teachers. So I see lots of opportunities here to blend some of their learning with Microsoft Teams, with um, Flipgrid, bring in some art outcomes, and then continue to elevate the quantity of writing that I see from my student colleagues. So how do we think it's gonna go for unit three? I think it'll be fun. Again, the whole animal unit. Uh, kids love animals. They love talking about animals, telling the time they saw this animal or that animal. And um, I imagine that they're, they're going to enjoy it as well. Um, and I see uh, the shared experience, especially around we're all talking and reading and writing about adaptations. And I think with the fables, because some kids weren't writing about the same thing, some um, peer edits, some feedback wasn't as universal as mm -hmm. I would hope it Good would have point. been. Mm -hmm. With this, uh, because um, we're all kind of doing the same thing, I think there's going to be uh, some opportunities with our own whole group instruction that's going to meet the needs of all of our learners. Yeah, very good point. Um, well, Marilyn, we are on day two of our fall break, so I mm -hmm. hope you enjoy the rest of your break, and uh, we'll see everybody back in a few weeks to talk about Unit 4. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks very much, Marilyn.